How your reports and other documents are formatted is more important than you may think. In most cases, the people working with your documents don't have an alternative source for this data, so they judge your work on two bases. Whether the numbers look realistic, and the general look of the report. Sloppy formatting may make them think you have the same approach to data accuracy. Furthermore, it's difficult to find errors in a dataset, but it's easy to find a shortcoming in formatting. Any deviation from the rules is noticeable. There are two ways to format an Excel document. Using one of the default styles, for tables or charts, etc., or formatting each element by yourself. Using the styles that Excel offers is convenient for beginners who want to create a typical table or chart. Those who want to have full control over the layout prefer manual formatting. I don't recommend relying on Excel styles as they don't cover everything, but I'll show you how to use them at the end of this lesson. Example 1. Let's assume that we were asked to make a table containing data in the layout shown below. We've collected the relevant data, but some things aren't quite right yet. First, all the data and category descriptions need to be visible. At the moment, the data in two of the cells do not fit in their corresponding columns because they are too wide and display with hash symbols to signify this. So we need to change the formatting of the numbers. Select all of the numbers, right-click on them, and select Format Cells. Under the Numbers tab, select the Number category. Then select zero decimal places, tick Use Thousands Separator, and press OK. To change the width of columns and rows, select Column I and double-click on the line separating the column to expand the column so that all the data in it is visible. You can also single left-click and drag to extend the column width manually. Let's now select the columns with the months, the ones from C to H. If we click on any of the lines separating the columns in this range, all the columns automatically adjust their sizes to fit the widest piece of data. For column D, it's the cell containing the word February, and for column G, the widest is the cell containing the number 6676, which means it is much narrower than column D. This difference in width between these two columns doesn't look aesthetically pleasing. To make the columns equally wide, select them and manually adjust the width of one of them to your desired size. In our case, it would make sense to base the width on the word February. Let's activate any cell in the table and use Ctrl A to select the whole table. It's easy to remember this shortcut since the letter A stands for all then right-click anywhere in the selected area and select an appropriate border design. I suggest choosing all borders, then thick outside borders. Now we'll only select the row header cells, also giving them thick outside borders, and repeat for the column headers. The border icons provide the basic and most frequently used borders, but if we want to use other border styles such as double layered borders or even dividing the cells diagonally, Right-click on the selected cell or range and choose Format Cells from the menu. Under the Border tab, all the formatting options that Excel provides are located. First, we need to choose which formatting line we are interested in from the Style window, and then, on the right, choose where the border should be. Select the diagonal line. The next operation will be merging the cells. There are diagonal lines in cells B2 and B3 that don't look good. Select the cells we want to merge. Right-click on any of them and select the Merge and Center icon. This command, like the borders, is also available in the Home tab, but right-clicking speeds up the work. We'll also merge the cells for the first two quarters and then for the first half of the year. After merging cells I2 and I3, we find that we prefer the header for the first half of the year to be displayed halfway down the newly merged cell. Click Middle Align on the Home tab. To change the background colour, first select the range, then right-click and choose the arrow next to the paint can and choose the colour. If, once again, we want to use the same colour, we do not have to reselect it. Just click on the paint can icon. Then format the row with the data for Category 1. 
in bold in the font, which is the B icon, B standing for bold, then choose thick outside borders and a light green background. Once we format a cell column or row, and we would like another cell or area to have the same format, instead of repeating all the operations from scratch, it's better to use a format painter. Select the pattern area, which in our example is the range containing category 1. Double left click on the format painter icon. If we just click once, we'll only be able to use the template once. If we click twice, we can use it for as long as until we choose another command, or press the escape key. Click on cell B25, and the whole row of the table changes into the correct formatting. Then click on cell B29, and press the escape key on the keyboard. It's possible to copy the formatting of one cell at a time into a larger number of cells, as well as copying the formatting of the area into a larger area. Another way of formatting several areas is to select all of them before formatting. To select several areas, press and hold the control key while selecting them. In most cases, reports and tables look better if we disable grid lines. To enable or disable grid lines, tick or untick grid lines from the View tab. The description of the last line, Sum for all brands, is quite long. Let's assume we cannot simply use the word total instead, as it is the corporate standard or someone important likes this description. So we should put it onto two lines. To do this, click the wrap text command, which you can find in the home tab. You can also do it by right clicking on the cell and selecting format cells. In the format cells window, select the alignment tab, which in addition to text wrapping, allows you to change the orientation of the text for example from vertical to horizontal, select horizontal and vertical text alignment, which is also available on the home tab, merge the cells, or shrink the text to fit, and a few other alignment options. The text will now be visible in two or more rows. The width of the line can be adjusted manually, or double click on the line separating the row numbers. Adding enter to the formula bar. The wrap text option with regards to column width decides how much text should be on the first and second lines. If you have made your decision, put the cursor in the desired place and press the left alt and enter buttons. As a result, it will transition onto the next line. To change the font in a cell or range, first select it, then choose the correct size from the drop-down box from the home tab. I recommend using the icons next to it. The first increases the font, and the second decreases it. It's much faster than choosing the size of the font. Those icons and the drop-down menu are also available after right-clicking. Avoiding formatting destruction. The basic principle of formatting should be postponing it until the very end of our work, when we are sure about the layout of our report. If we do it earlier, Pasting, copying, and other operations will spoil the formatting, and we'll have to do it again anyway. Often, however, changes made after formatting are unavoidable. Making changes without destroying the formatting is shown in the lesson Copying. In Excel, we can hide rows and columns. Select them, and right-click on the row number or column letter. Then select Hide. To unhide, select the row before and row after the hidden rows, then right-click and select Unhide. If you want to be sure that there are no hidden rows or columns in the sheet, click on the rectangle to the left of column A and above row 1. Then right-click on the rows and choose Unhide and repeat it for the columns. Let's go to the sheet Formatting 1A. Hiding and unhiding has no effect on the data in the cells, and they are still used by the formulas. 2 plus 2 equals 5. When hiding rows, please remember that hidden rows are still used in the calculations. Here, row 4 is hidden, and cell B4 contains 1, and that is why there is no mistake in this calculation. Please note that, by default, charts in Excel do not use data from the hidden cells. Example 2. Sheet Formatting 2. There are many predefined formats available in Excel. We can use them to format our reports. 
Their biggest advantage is that inexperienced Excel users can quickly get a professional looking sheet. Styles only work properly for typical tables or graphs. The sheet formatting 2 contains a table with data. It only contains one row with column headers and has no totals, so it can be formatted as a table. Activate any cell in the table and from the Home tab, click Format as Table, then select the colour pattern that you would like. A window will appear in which we are asked to confirm if the table area has been properly recognised. Click OK. The table will be formatted according to the selected pattern. If we are not satisfied with the fact that the header cells contain the filter symbols, we can set the active cell in the table and disable the filter by selecting Sort and Filter and then the Filter command, or with the keyboard shortcut Control shift l This exercise can be considered done. You can read more about the advantages and disadvantages of formatting tables in the table lesson. More about filters in the filtering lesson. The above method cannot be used for the table in example 1, as it had two rows of column headers. Example 3. Sheet Formatting 3. The Sheet Formatting 3 contains a bar graph. After selecting it and clicking on the brush icon, we'll be able to choose a chart style from the available standard styles. The style of the chart is constantly changing while we move the mouse over the styles available. The style will be selected when you click on one of them. We can also choose a colour palette by clicking on the colour tab. After changing the style of the chart, we will change its title's font style. Select the title by clicking on it, and then select one of the text styles from the Format tab. When formatting Excel spreadsheets, remember that the formatting should match the purpose of the report. A common beginner's mistake is the use of sophisticated styles to impress the user, but unfortunately this can create the impression of a lack of a professional approach. More on this topic in the lesson Advanced Professional Reports. One of our subscribers wrote, What previously took me 8 hours is now possible in just one. Send the link to this course to your friends. We're sure that they will appreciate your recommendation.